folks, we just went for a, about an eight, nine mile run down the lake from uh, Stormy Point to area. And we're back in this nice looking little bay, way back in the corner. Table Rock Lake. And we're looking for a little ledge rock, relatively close to deep water. And we'll see how it turns out. Looks good. Let's hope we get some crawdads and some catfish. Probably just crawdads today. It don't look like a good catfish hole. But uh, we were setting out so much good juices in the lake in the crawfish traps, we figured we'd set a couple noodles too and put some live bluegill on them. So, see what happens. It's going to be tough to video. Mama T's not here. So, you might see the aftermath, but not the catch. We'll see. Marking the trap. Noodles for the trap are blue and the catfish noodles are orange. Just had one catfish noodle get hung up in a tree. Didn't have anything on the second, but like I said, we weren't uh, having too high hopes on the catfish, so we're here for. We got two out of the first one, but man, that's a back daddy right there. I'll pull them out here in a minute and show you. But, oh yeah, look at that bad boy. And you can see we had some bluegill fillet or bluegill remains in there. A little mussel that was from the lake itself. And that is one back daddy crawdad right there. Come here, you little guy. Ouch, 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 ouch. That is a crawdad and a half. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, crab dead in this morning. And we got some good ones in there. No real monsters in this one, but went one, two, three, four, baby, five, six, seven. So we are getting a few more as we go deeper. So that's cool. Look at the amount of shad back in here. That is freaking crazy. I'll throw my net here in a little bit. That's what we're talking about. Now I loaded this trap up with bait. I probably overstuffed it because it was the last trap. As you can see, they hardly got into the main guineas, but I had bluegills and mussels and mussel shells and everything. Yeah, there's some mussel shells down there uh, in there laying in there and uh, we loaded up. There's got to be a couple dozen in there. So we got a snack. I'm going to reset these bad boys and move the shower worms out deeper. Well, this is our haul out of four traps with a one night soak in a fishing area where we had never been before. So we got more crawfish out of the deeper traps. We basically started setting the traps in the back corner of a crick, crick arm and worked our way out towards the main body of the lake. The last trap that we set caught the most crawfish, so that taught us a little something that they were out a little deeper in the lake. Try to find that transitionary zone between mud and rock. So when we reset the traps, we set our first trap where our last and most productive trap was, and we then moved the uh, other traps further out into the lake, basically leapfrogging the traps. So uh, we'll see if it gets better as it gets deeper or not. And we have a little more video of coming up for the next day's run of the same traps set a little differently. Hey folks, it's August 24th and we're going to go check our traps. Uh, we had pretty good success earlier in the week and we left our traps there for two days and we didn't realize when we set the traps that it's a busy cove. So we'll, hopefully they're still there. But anyway, they've had a good solid two day soak. So With we'll lots just, of goodies in them. Yeah, lots of goodies in them. So we will see what happens. Yeah. Baby. There's a baby and a big 
Baby. Yeah, look at that. Look at that big old boy there. I know. There's a couple of them I'm gonna have to throw out. There's some little ones in there. Uh -huh. One, two, three, there's four little look guys. Look at that big sucker. Yeah, we'll throw them out at the dock. I know. Get them in, baby. Alright, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, back up. T Bone, I think you're still scared of these guys, right? Ever since he got his nose pinched that time, he kind of backs up. What's the matter, T-Bone? All right, get off that. Let me have it. They gutted it, honey, look. <laughs> there ain't nothing left but the outside. Yeah, throw them back. There's a few little ones getting there. Look at that, folks. Look at that big sucker. Oh, one of them lost their claw, honey. Look. Wait, look. One of them lost their claw. Yep. Look at that. They're huge. He wants me. Oh. Look, baby! Look! Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that we just rebuilt this winter. Put uh, all new electrical wiring in it. Redid the teak. We do iPilot trolling motor on it. Rip tide, salt water version. We do plan on going on down south and maybe doing a little intercoastal fishing. Got the uh, Lawrence, or excuse me, the Garmin Echo Map 10SV with the live scope. And she is a fishing machine. All right, folks, I tried to give you a little rundown of where we're fishing. This is a little area view of the creek channel that we were up in. And um, as you can notice, the right end of the screen kind of flattens out a little bit. And that flat extends out into the water. And uh, that's uh, beyond that flat, it gets a little deeper. So we 
figured we'd try to stay up on the flat and place our traps in anywhere from 10 to 18 feet of water. Found out that the furthest trap out was the most productive. So this is the GPS marks. I usually mark them with the GPS. This is the quantities of crawfish that we got in each trap. So the next day, we decided to flip-flop them and run them out towards deeper water. That didn't necessarily work because the inside trap, which was the last trap and the most productive trap on both days, was right on the rock mud line, and that seemed to be the most productive technique and location. Well, we figured we'd show you some of the meals and catches one last time. Uh, not all these came from that two-day harvest, but uh, most of them did. And you know, it's just such a great time to share the, the outdoors with your family and friends and cook a great meal and spend that time outdoors. And especially in these times of uh, social distancing, what a great way to social distance. So uh, enjoy yourselves when you're out there. There's nothing better than eating food right from the table to the lake. And please try not to over harvest from one area. If you get a good catch in one area, uh, leave that one alone for the rest of the year and, and let it let it repopulate and go out and explore and find new areas of the lake because that's really the fun part is going out and exploring and spending that time you love with uh, family and friends. So peace out, tight lines, and love life and it'll love you back.